This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. You are listening to Death, Glory, or Disappointment with your man, Dan Meredith. What is up? Hello, Jonathan. How the devil are you, chap? I have great English there, didn't Whoa. I? I don't know why the fuck I did that. <laughs> you, sound, you sound amazing, bro. Is there something different? It's almost like I'm recording this podcast not with an iPhone in my pants and the free headphones that come with it. Somebody may have upgraded to a professional setup. Finally. Wow, wow. You're you're growing up, Dan. I'm so proud of you, son. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Facebook ads and everything, mate. It's like a proper market. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what what I like though? I like that you were able to go thirty episodes not giving a fuck. And then and then now yeah, you upgraded. <laughs> well that's actually gonna be our next one. You actually uh, our next um D G D is gonna be about not giving a fuck. Right. And how we did it. So yeah, you, you've uh, you preempted our next show, Jonathan. So what's this one about then? Well, this one is politely and with no malice, nothing but love and abundance and unicorns and rainbows in my heart. But I'm going to politely tell the anti-hustle crew to go and fuck themselves. What? Wait a second. <gasps> I, I know. No, Dan. What are you talking? Wait, 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 wait. Wait a second. I might I might be mistaken because I feel like I'm part of the anti-hustle crew. But what what does that mean to you? Because I'm I'm probably off here. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things that really okay. So obviously, as you know, um, did an event with Gary V earlier. So last year, shit was last year now. Um, Gary's extremely pro hustle, work hard all the time. You know, grind, 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 all that kind of stuff. Met with him a couple of times since. He's a cool dude. Um, but I've noticed, that, like, he's still obviously crazy popular, but I've just noticed on social media, maybe in the last four to six months, not backlash, but just kind of a little bit of a dig at people who were hustling, working hard, grinding, all that kind of stuff. And it annoyed me, Jonathan, because the thing is, I know I look okay, I don't necessarily look and sometimes sound, <laughs> definitely the most professional, the smartest. But I'm quite sharp. And the thing is, I always look behind what people are putting on. So what I mean by that is, is that there are people there who are talking about, you know, using nothing but vision boards and the law of attraction and manifesting and all this kind of stuff. And to be fair, I've got nothing against that. If it's working for someone, it's said in my book, awesome. But it's when people are selling that as an opportunity that I do not like. Does that make sense? Okay, so there, it sounds to me, and I'm glad that we've cleared this up, it sounds to me like what you're saying is there's some assholes out there selling being lazy. Yeah, well, it's not, well, okay, it's not so much being lazy, it's, okay, so, right, do I work as hard as I did, let's just say when I started going online, setting up my gym, doing my copywriting market, no. Hard work is different um, than it is now. So now I need more downtime to be creative, to come up with ideas, to de-stress, you know, but I will still grind and knuckle down and we'll talk about what I did in the last few days um, to explain that. But there's a lot of people who are saying, you know, you don't need to hustle, you don't need to sacrifice, you don't need to, you know, push your limits and go all in. But I'm like, a lot what? of people are saying that. Really? Oh, mate, it's like... Yeah, there are people like there are people who say you know it should be all peace and flow, and it should be you know you shouldn't have to force anything or push anything when it comes to kind of growing your business. <laughs> and, but the people who are sort of preaching this are, mate, they have worked their asses off for years. So, for example, someone who I know, no names, I'm not a bitch like that, but there's a couple of people I know, Come on. Who, <laughs> oh, but who, who have you know masterminds and events and. And coaching programs and so on and so forth where they, where they talk about this and they say, you know, like, you know, 
if you, you know, are using your vibrations, you'll attract the right people and you can manifest things, all this kind of stuff. And they're based at certain things in that are based in neuroscience and people smarter than me have told me about stuff, but I just know if I think about things, I end up doing them. Simple as that. So that's the Dan version. But what a lot of people don't realize is how far back you need to go to realize that they work their asses off for years. Like genuinely, you know, we're old school, lots of hours, lots of work, lots of hustle, lots of effort, making sacrifices, spending less time with family, friends, partner, kids. You know, maybe their health took a nosedive as, as mine did for a period of time. Yet now they preach this very much gentler way of growing your business and entrepreneurship. And I'm like, well, that's fine now. I mean, if you were to look at my life now, the my day to day, let's just say, work commitment, as in actual knuckling down at the coalface, is way less, way less than it used to be. But that would be me, say, if I told you, mate, you only need to work two two-hour blocks a day. That's kind of what I do. Sometimes just one two-hour block, as in like sit down, hardcore knuckling down. Stuff I do on social media is obviously, yes, it's kind of brand building and social, uh, social proof, and obviously, you know, I'm talking to my audience. I don't see that as work. I do that. Anyway, I have fun with it. But actually sitting down, doing the work, you know, two to four hours a day. Did I do that when I started? No. And I'll say this, this is why I say to you, Jonathan, because even though your life is a little more relaxed now, obviously you've got some great time away coming up soon, you still work hard to get to where you are. You know, we met at Masterminds. You were meeting people. You were signing up people on the podcast. You were always connecting. Now, because you're known, as you know, the good producer that you are, and obviously great co-host to me and a few others, it's easier to come to you. Same as me, but we still have to put in the hard work at the start. I want to call out one of my friends. On, will, will you allow me to do this? Please because do. One of our friends, and and you work with him a ton. I work with him a ton, and he kind of does this a little bit. How about our friend with the Copy Slacker product and and promoting nah. the ten minute lifestyle? Meanwhile. He's the hardest working fucker I have ever met in my life, I think. Maybe second to you. I don't know. But, but I mean, is that is that what we're talking about or is it something totally different? Okay, like so let's just say, so we can name him because he's <laughs> our good friend, Mr. Spencer. We're doing, a, doing an event with him very soon, which, you know, I'm kind of proud of as well because, you know, kind of coming full circle, Ben was pretty much one of my um, – very, I think he was one of my very, very first coaches now to kind of co-headline a stage with him. It's kind of cool. But anyway, yeah, so Ben honestly works, you know, a small amount of day. I mean, he's very honest. With that. He doesn't hide it, does he? He's very, very open with it. But Ben also spent years and years and years working hard and trying to beat controls and testing things and learning his craft and studying. I mean, I can't remember his backstory, but I know he kind of was, you know, kind of struggling financially at one point, wasn't he, way back when, when he first started, it wasn't easy. And you don't get there by it being easy. So come on, tell come on, Jonathan, we always talk about me. What's your story then? So how did you get to know, how hard did you have to work to get to where you are now that you are, you know, pretty much one of the authorities when it comes to, you know, business and entrepreneurial podcasts? I think it's that, that uh, and you, you love memes, so I know you've seen the meme ah, where there's, there's an iceberg, right? And all we see is the tip of the iceberg, and then there's like hundreds of feet of that iceberg underground, right? And so that that's all of our stories, because now, sure, people know who we are, but they don't see the 10 years of turmoil, grinding out, not having money and all that stuff that came to bring us where we are today. And so I had the same thing, bro. I worked online forever, and it was Ben who helped me start turning around my business. But I started online in like 2008. I was doing my first podcast and it wasn't until 2013 where I had my first success. And it wasn't until 2015 till I turned it into a business where people actually know what I do. So you look. started podcasting in 2008. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. I didn't know that, mate. Yeah. See how <laughs> I didn't actually know that. I honestly thought I know we met up, we met properly the mastermind with Ryan about a couple of years ago, but I kind of thought it was like, Within a few years of that, 2008, shit. See? <laughs> there Within it is. 10 years. <laughs> hey, now. 10-year overnight success. <laughs> That's all of our stories. But I'm with you, too, because I, I, you know, when you said the anti-hustle thing, I got a little nervous because I, I don't like to work eight or 10 hours a day, and I'm not built for that. And I do the same thing that you do. I have maybe two two-hour blocks in a day of 
full focus productivity, but that's all I can give on any any given day. And so I was kind of concerned that you might be talking about grinding your face off and working nonstop, <sighs> but there is a balance that you need to strike Mate, or a harmony. Sure, especially for growing businesses, if you have, you know, you need to be creative or something. You cannot do that if you're on all the time. So, for example, today, so just to give you an idea, it's Saturday, beautiful day in Brighton. It's sunny, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it looks tropical. It's cold as fuck out there, um, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm just looking out my window now as a recording. And this week, when I say nearly broke me, that sounds a little bit over the top, but I am, I've had my last cup of coffee today to get me through this recording, and I'm off. I'm going to have a spa day. Really? The next 24 hours. Yeah, mate, because last week, so what we did is I got my, so I've got kind of like my core team, which are kind of like my my copywriters, um, the guys do my online stuff, web development, my mentor, obviously my right-hand man, uh, Teggles, and we went to one of my team's house, got a big house, plenty of rooms, and we didn't sleep for two days. We worked. So we had something that we had had on the drawing board for time. It had been there. We hadn't got things done. Um, well, no, sorry, that's like we got things done, but we needed to just, you know what it's like when you're building like multiple projects like part of a funnel or a business plan you need. It's sometimes easier if you're all just in the room yeah, and you're all working so you can share ideas, cancel things off, crack things out. And we did probably what should take most normal people, you know, four, four, six weeks maybe. We did it in 24 hours, 48 hours, sorry. Two days, non slot no sleep. I had a 90 minute nap, I think. Um, maybe for two 45 minute kind of like lying down. I may have fallen asleep. I don't know, but it's kind of roughly how long I guess it was in the two days. Um, do I advise it? No. Do I feel like shit now? Yes. Uh, will I feel fine tomorrow? Yes, of course I will. Good night's sleep and I'll be right as rain, but it needed to be done. Sometimes if your back is against the wall, money's not coming in, business isn't where it needs to be. Sometimes you have to just knuckle the fuck down and do stuff. So I'm not in a position of needing anything right now. This is, I'm, you know, I wanted to level up aggressively. This is my choice. No one is forcing me to do this, but I've got the guys and girls together and we just got it done. We're all, we're all chatting to each other about how knackered we are today. I got back from boxing this morning and we were just like, all I wanted to do was sleep. But I'm like, nope, we're gonna finish off the day, get everything that needs to be done, get the emails out, get the recordings done and off we go. So. What I'm trying to say here is, is that if someone is telling you you don't need to work hard from time to time, they're just, they're just peddling horseshit to you. And often the people that preach it have come from a place where they've worked very, very hard to get known or to get skilled or to build a social media base or something like that. And now they can preach that. But I personally, I mean, again, ladies and gents who are listening, you're welcome to disagree with me. I have never seen anything good come from, well, so not coming from hard work. Like you need, as far as I'm concerned, you need hard work, especially at the start of anything. It doesn't take, um, so it's not an overnight success. It does take time. And when you get there, okay, so when you achieve a, you know, let's say when you get to, you know, our, our respective levels and our respective fields, do you need to work as many hours? No, you don't. Because, you know, we're, we've achieved a level of success and we can't actually be as creative and we can't do our job as well if we're always on, we need off time as well, but there are equally times when you need to just say, okay, balls deep, let's do it. Get the coffee on, handful of nootropics each, smashing down your throat, let's do it. And that's exactly what we did. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So <sighs> th there is some I'm hard work now. behind it. Yeah, hard work. And then and then you get to reap the rewards. And But even when you get those rewards, you still got to put it in. You still got to put your work in. But it's just a different type of work. I like it. I'm with you. I so wanted to disagree with you. I, I just want to pick fights. And I don't ever get a chance to. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I, like I said, and I know, I, I know <laughs> some of Dan's philosophies do rub me up the wrong way. So I'm glad you weren't able to on that one, buddy. Uh, so, Dan, you want to give us a sneak peek of next time? Yeah, what did I mention earlier? I just told it you. I told it you at the start, and then I got all excited in my fuck the hustle crew. What the fuck did I just say on the last It was, it? so I, I'm sure it's another version it's of so not rich. giving a fuck. Because oh, it, this is, yeah, this is the, the zero fucks given philosophy, uh, um, which I didn't realize that I do um, quite as well as I do. But 
I really wasn't very good at it to start off with. And I'll, I'll sort of explain how I went from caring too much and basically being a little bitch and worrying about what everyone thinks to now to the point where, well, you'll find out in the next episode. All right. Looking forward to that. So another death, glory or disappointment is in the can. We'll be back with you next time. You've been listening to Death, Glory, or Disappointment with Dan Meredith. If you enjoyed the show and you want more, then your next step is to go to iTunes right now and subscribe. And while you're there, give us a rating and review. It'll help us out a bunch, plus it'll bring you good karma. This is the PodcastFactory.com. 